Good morning, friends. This is Paul. I pray your day is filled with peace and joy. Oh, it's Father's Day. Let's bypass the platitudes and the neat sayings about fathers. There are far more lousy fathers than there are good ones. As a matter of fact, the percentage of good fathers goes down lower each year. Boys have babies. <clears throat> Men have families. It's not a new phenomenon. My father was a narcissistic entitled boy. He fathered me and then left just before my birth. He never found or reformed or became responsible. He died a jerk that he lived. My stepfather was no prize. Uh, thanks to him, I had childhood PTSD. I, n- I never felt secure or at peace, always anticipating an outburst of rage and physical abuse. Never heard the word I love you from him, never had an embrace from him. Was convinced that he hated me because I was not his. I never thought the word I love you could come out of him, not even I like you. Oh, you know, don't get me wrong. I was less than a perfect child. In fact, much less. But no one deserves the beatings I got. I thought his coming home was a little bit less enjoyable for me than a trip to the dentist. Okay, let's talk men. Fathers, the only test that there is, is do your children respect you and love you? Do they obey you if they're young and seek your guidance if they're older? Do they love their wives and do their wives love them? Do they give their wives and their family security because they are responsible? Do they have God because of you and do they love God because of you? Um, Do the transfer love from you to others around you And respect those that you respect because you respect God. And do they have the respect of their children? And maybe will they mourn you when you die or have a party? No excuses. If you do not pass this test, start as a responsible friend. Love them unconditionally. And in short, man up. They deserve it. You need it. So that otherwise, you're going to just have to identify as a monkey, a baby maker, and an abandoner. Have a great Father's Day. Hey, Paul. Hey. Good blog, Paul. Um, so I like the blog. Um, something that I was thinking as you were reading it is you talked about um, kind of the, the measuring stick of how to know if you're a good father or not. You talked about, you know, do your kids um, take care of the people around them? Do they love their kids? Do they, um, you know, if they're younger, do they obey you? Do they respect you? Do they love you? Um, you talked about kind of the measuring stick of that. What do you see as the core, though, of fatherhood that leads to those outcomes? What do you think is kind of the core, um, one or many of those cores? Well, I think the most important thing to recognize, if you can recognize it as a father, is that God gave you a human being. I mean, whenever Chris, my oldest, was born, I I could not stand. I stood there looking when the nurse held him and said, this is your son. And I thought, oh, my goodness, God gave me everything. A real human being to me. He gave it to me. Now, he gave it to me. Why? Because he wanted me to love him and raise him and protect him and secure him and teach him and guide him. I mean, the greatest gift I ever saw was right in front of me. How could God give me a human being? So first of all, I think you have to have a sense of respect of where he came from, what God wants you to do with him, and how to really say, this is a precious gift. And It's like 
something, it's, it's like a piece of clay. I can abandon it, and it's hardened and will not bend. Stiff neck. I can love it and mold it and cherish it, and it will always be there to be molded, always there to be grow, always there to expand. Mm-hmm. I guess that's my answer. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I see... I see part of what you're talking about in your blog is kind of the how important fatherhood is to the normal development of being a human being, um, to really developing well, um, to being fully who you are. So what do you think it is that fathers impart to children? What do you think is kind of that core piece that they're imparting to the kids that allows them to, to develop normally? He- healthily maybe is a better word. I think that we didn't make ourselves. Mm-hmm. that God made us. Mm-hmm. And God loved us, and God is the ultimate father. I mean, he is the ultimate father. And not only did he make us and love us, he died for us. But I think something else is that God says we're unique. I mean, because I had no real father in my life, because I had an abusive stepfather, I had to find a father. And that was very difficult. Thank God, God sent me different men in my life. My Sunday school teacher who, who uh, was kind. And you think, well, uh, what are the great things you've experienced, the platitudes and all that? Kindness, mm-hmm. acceptance. I didn't get screamed at I, in a rage. I mean, yeah, that probably I deserved, but it's, it's, it's raged. Um, he, I could genuinely tell he cared about me. This Sunday school mm-hmm. teacher, no, my fathers didn't. And knowing that he cared about me helped me to think that I was valuable. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you believe you're valuable and you attach purpose and meaning to that, it gives you a real identity that you're someone, not a piece of garbage, not a... Not a one night stand, not a sperm gone wild. <laughs> you are actually someone who was created for meaning. And then you realize because my real father abandoned me and would never even allow me to speak to him, and my stepfather hated me, um, you you begin to think that you're not something special. You were just plopped down and that's it, a mass of tissue. And, uh, but then when you realize that, that, that God loves you and that God made you, that your sperm donor didn't do it, but your Heavenly Father did it, it, it can change things. Because I was on a road to ultimate destruction. I was full of bitterness. I was full of anger. More than anything else, I wanted revenge. I wanted revenge on my real father. I wanted revenge on my stepfather because of the abuse and the only thing that changed that was to realize that god said okay i was there too Mm -hmm. you were there being abused i was beside you tampering that abuse keeping it from being overwhelming and totally destructive in other words i cared about you Mm -hmm. so how do you think uh, fatherhood for you kind of played into that healing process for you if you think it did I had an opportunity to do something again. I did not have an opportunity to be a son to a healthy father. I could have done one of two things. I could have continued that on and justified it because I had a lousy father. I have a right to be a lousy father. Or I could look at myself and say, I never want my kids to experience what I experienced because I love them. It, it's, nobody should experience that. No human being should. It's, a dog shouldn't experience mm-hmm. that. Yeah. So I looked and said, you know what? I'm not going to be that way with God's help. Now, was I perfect? Absolutely <laughs> not. Mm-hmm. No way. Mm-hmm. No way. I carried over a lot of that terrible behavior in my mind, a lot of the bitterness did translated by not, I, I couldn't trust anyone. And I couldn't even trust my own children. Uh, 
because you know you understand what PTSD is. Mm-hmm. There's never a safe place, and there's never going to be anyone that will betray you. you. You have to understand that it's the hand that reaches out that you think is going to nurture you that turns around and slaps you, slugs you, and you're kind of like, I don't want any, I don't trust anything but myself. Mm-hmm. But God worked a miracle in my life, and I was. I had been compliant enough for him to work it quicker and sooner and more. But I, I was glad he did what he did, and it wasn't me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something that—this is, this is a thought, because um, I, I totally agree with you. I think that's certainly having walked as part of that journey with you. Um, I would agree with that a, a, a thousand percent. I've seen some of that happen. Um, but what I'm struck by is we're sitting here, just kind of a thought— fatherhood and childhood like marriage are really a single organism at some point so fathers become fathers become fathers by raising their children but their children partake in their fathers becoming fathers along the path so it's all one it's all one continual flow from father to son to son to father to father to son to son to father all the way down so you really just like marriage you walk part of your existence with that other person with that other human being and um yeah like you said you hand those things down you pass those things down but um you know we've gotten to chris and i and lee have gotten to see you um go through some of those changes in your life and some of those pieces and then we've gotten to see you certainly with our kids um go through some of those changes as well as well and it's a pretty amazing thing and i think um looking at your life um and how your life how your fatherhood has turned into my fatherhood um one of the things that I've seen is uh, that was always the guiding principle was unconditional love. No matter how mad you were at us, um, no matter how much you were displeased at us, no matter how much you just couldn't talk to us because you were so angry with us, <laughs> um, there was never a sense of a- abandonment or that you were going to leave. Even though there were probably times when we wish you would leave us alone, you were never going to leave us. Um, and I think that unconditional love is that peace that allows um, – I think it does two things. I think for the kids, it allows it allows a child to develop uh, normally with healthy perspectives about who Christ is. Um, but I'll say from the father's end, um, having gained a whole new perspective on my childhood from being a father, um, unconditional love requires boatloads of sacrifice. Um, well, I think one time I was offered a job and uh, – was quite a prestigious offer, uh, one that very, very, very few people in the world get an opportunity to have. And when it was handed to me on a platter, my first statement was, um, what time is it going to, how much time is it going to take me to do this? And they said, oh, nightly, nightly, uh, five days a week at least, sometimes maybe on Saturday. And I looked at the guy and I said, I got two young boys at home because Lee I adopted later. But I've got two young boys at home. And I said, you know what? Make you a deal. After I've raised them, I'll come back. And if you still want to make the offer to me, that's great. And if you don't, I don't care. Because it wasn't about me. I had already succeeded or failed in who I was. It was about succeeding at something I never had, which was a father. And that was very important to me, very important to me. In fact, sometimes maybe my over-strictness was because it was so important to me that you understand you've got to be a son. You're going to be a son. I'm going to be a father. You're going to be a son. So, I don't know. It is difficult. Well, age certainly heals a a lot of stuff because as I get older, um, I— you just, you just gain perspective on things as you get older. And I think there's an amazing amount of healing that comes from raising kids properly. Um, I think, I think, you know, I don't think fatherhood can be underscored in the importance of a healing process. Um, you know, I, I see you and my relationship with you has changed from raising my own boys. Cause I see so much of, I see so much of you and raising my boys. And you know, when you're a kid, it seems so easy. It wouldn't, it's not that hard to raise. Just leave me alone. Let me play Xbox or whatever. Um, but, you know, being on the other end as a father, man, it really opens up your eyes and shows you something different. And, um, you know, how you treat your kids 
really, really opens your eyes to how people should treat you. Yeah. Love, respect, yeah. taking care of people around you. And, and I think you did a, a fantastic job with this because, you know, relating a short story, you know, we used to tell, um, we used to tell uh, no arm and no leg jokes when we were kids and we thought they were funny and we joked around a lot. It's a pretty, Im- be, having a sense of humor is a pretty important quality in our family. Um, and we joked about it and we were laughing about it one day and you took us into a KB Toys. Not that anybody's going to know what a KB Toys is, but you took us into a KB Toys and there was a kid with no arms and legs. And I was like, yeah, you know, they're, they're jokes and it's fine to joke, but you have to have compassion for people and where people are at. And you always handed compassion on to us. Um, another thing you always taught, told us, you know, if you start something, at least see it through to the end and then you can decide to do something else after that. Um, you know, that discipline and hard work. And um, you really taught us that we were loved no matter what, no matter how angry you got, no matter how frustrated you were with whatever was going on. And as a kid, you don't understand necessarily what someone's frustrated with, but you always showed us unconditional love. And, uh, you know, I mean, that just, that bears out in how your kids develop. I think that's the, I think those are the core building blocks to making good, healthy Christian kids is compassion, unconditional love and some amount of discipline well you can always tell yourself a good father but that's that's kind of blown in the wind yeah it's when your kids and your grandkids say you're a good father mm-hmm. or grandfather and and yet it, it's daily I, I give this one thing today today this day we were moving a trailer um and it, we go over a cattle garden all of a sudden i look back and the trailer's unhitched from the truck I stop and I go back and I know what the deal was the three boys were back there who hitched up the trailer were having a good time and were playing and forgot to put the uh, hitch on the trailer tie it down and I was like usually I'm like don't you know this could did, could be serious and, 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 and I'm like okay I'm, I'm angry because you were playing and not doing business you work when you work you play when you play but I also thought to myself, you know what, guys? When this is over, it's over. They got back in the truck and I told a joke because I wanted them to know, you know, it didn't last. You got the message, you understand, and we're going down the road. But that for me <clears throat> was something young and in my family would have never happened. Mm-hmm. In other words, I was not forgiven until my next mistake. <laughs> And then it just added on to it. Well, as Paul Harvey would say, you know, he always say, uh, and now the rest of the story. So here's the rest of the story. So we were loading chemical for the tractor yesterday, and Lee and I looked down, and we had forgot to latch the trailer on the chemical trailer. It had been all the way to town and back. So, yeah. Well, thanks, Paul. I think okay. that was a fantastic blog. And, um, you know, from all of us, thank you for being a good dad and a good grandpa. And, um, helping us raise our kids. It really makes a difference. Well, thank you for being such good kids, or I wouldn't look good at all. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bear. Bye. Hey y'all, thanks for joining us for Around the Supper Table. At Sanctuary Family Farms, we want to be real. Whether that's through our blogs, daily verses, or even Nana's recipes, we want to share the messages that God has laid on each of our hearts. If you liked what you heard today or want to get in touch with us, you can find us on Facebook and YouTube at Sanctuary Family Farms or our website at www.sanctuaryfamilyfarms.com where we share our recipes and blogs and sell farm-fresh beef and pork. We can't wait for you to join us again for next week's episode.